Welcome back, guys, to the 10-Minute Bitcoin Show. Going to get you out of here before the next block. You look good today. Did you get a haircut? Anyway, today we're talking about um, this article that I've come across on Hacker News about embedded spyware uh, in Samsung phones. Um, from my understanding, this affects Samsung models A, S, and M, uh, and this bloatware spyware app called Iron Source has been detected across West Asia and North Africa. Uh, they call that the WANA region in this. Interesting read here. I would recommend um, you go and peruse the Hacker News article or, or the uh, SMEX article itself that covers the, um, the implications of this basically pre-installed spyware that's been getting uncovered on Samsung phones in Asia and Africa. Um, this is, uh, this is, I would say we're, we're in the midst, you know, in, 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 in conjunction with being in the midst of an information warfare, we are certainly also in the midst of a privacy and, uh, digital self sovereignty battle as well. I would say, you know, computing, is 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 such an interesting battlefield because really open source software is probably the only thing keeping the the cage the walls of the cage from closing in guys the walls are closing in but the open source software is somewhat holding it at bay um you know there's only so much you can do uh, about these things maybe with these samsung phones you know i don't know maybe you could flash the os of the phone um and get around this bloatware installation, assuming that it's not compromised, like at the hardware level. Uh, but but you start running into more and more problems with these types of things, the less generic you go, right? So what I think a lot of people miss with this type of stuff is that, you know, your, your, your privacy is probably screwed, right? Either way. But when it comes to like, as Bitcoiners, when we're trying to have conversations about um, keeping secrets safe, you know, Bitcoin requires an element of privacy. And what I mean by that is not necessarily just transactional privacy. Like, of course, transactional privacy is desirable on chain too. We want transactional privacy with our money. But what I more so mean is that you need to be able to keep your private key safe. And in order to keep your private key safe, you have to keep it private, which means that the device or hardware slash software that you're using to store and sign your private key has to be private. So there's a kind of a catch 22 here where you would think that um, if you really wanted to keep a secret like that safe and private and secure, you would want to build a product that was custom made to do that thing. I mean, after all, like you, you wouldn't want to use a Samsung phone apparently because it might have bloatware on it. So you want to buy one of these custom made pieces of hardware that gets sold to you made by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. Um, I have never recommended this strategy. This has always been something that I am pretty fiercely against. I have this tweet here that says generic hardware and self-installed free and open source software is the nutrition and exercise of Bitcoin. Boutique Bitcoin specific hardware, pre-installed or closed source software and custodial products are the Ozempic and statins. You know, the truth is um, interacting with open source hardware is, is difficult, right? A lot of times it doesn't have the best user experience. Sometimes it does if it's really good. Um, even Bitcoin itself, just using Bitcoin, the Bitcoin software as it's written, you know, there's a lot of people out there that probably call themselves Bitcoiners that have never used like Bitcoin CLI. They've never run Bitcoin Core. They don't understand how this stuff works. And, you know, not everybody can be a coder. Um, not everybody has the, the bandwidth or the time or the resources to learn how to be a developer. Uh, but, but the truth is, guys, is that there really is no shortcut to something like as important as keeping a private key safe and private when it holds maybe a significant majority of your, of your wealth. Um, you're, talking about a, you're talking about a game where you don't want to play around. You don't want the Ozempic and statins, guys. You want to go for the nutrition and exercise because the Ozempic and statins is going to kill you. Um, that's just the long and short of it, right? Like there is no magic pill 
that's going to solve this problem for you. You have to at least understand the problem well enough to know um, that that you can easily be targeted with with these types of purpose built Bitcoin specific hardware uh, that gets sold to you by all of these influencers. Now we have some really great precedents for this. This is a, a DEF CON video from about a year ago talking about an FBI operation called Anom, which basically what was going on here was the FBI created a fake encrypted phone company and they added all kinds of super secret squirrel features to this custom phone OS that they would flash all kinds of different phones with. And then they built this influencer network that would sell these special super secret squirrel encrypted privacy phones to drug dealers. They marketed these things as like top of the line. They had all of these nifty little features like decoy pins that you could put in that would like brick the phone and like um, fake profiles that you could log into. And then they would like hide certain features of the app behind a calculator. And like people loved this stuff. They bought it up because it 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 felt like and it looked like um, the product tailored for people who wanted to get away with uh, illicit activity. And look, I'm I'm a Bitcoiner. I'm not really into illicit activity per se. I'm, I'm just trying to fix the money. I'm just trying to use sound money and, and keep it secure, my self-custodied private keys. But, you know, you look at the way that the FBI built up this intelligence network. I, I highly recommend that you go and watch this DEF CON video. If you have the time, it's about 40 minutes long, but it's a super insightful look into how they basically created the product that these people wanted. Uh, and they were logging literally everything that people did with these devices like of, they sold it as the magic pill for people who desired um encryption and privacy in their communications and and whatever it was that they were doing with their phone and they they built up an influencer network to, to push these products on their target audience and they were logging like the entire thing was a lie the entire privacy encryption facade was just a front end that they were showing their end users to make them think that the devices that they had purchased, the devices that they were using to communicate on were highly secure, um, anonymous, encrypted, and private. But the truth was that this was a narrative that got created by the FBI as an intelligence honeypot operation. And, and I think the key thing here is that they pushed these products so heavily on their their target audience that they wanted to collect this data on i think it would be ridiculous for us to assume that this kind of thing couldn't happen in bitcoin um, i think it would be ridiculous for us to assume that if you buy that wallet back end that comes in the neat little case that somebody mails to your house that has all of these software tools pre-installed on it that are supposed to make your Bitcoin safer, more private, more secure, whatever. Um, you should be really skeptical of that promise, right? Because I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I don't have any referral links for you. Um, I'm just a fan of open source software. And, and the truth is, anybody that knows anything about security will tell you if you want to reduce attack surface when it comes to trying to keep a secret safe, like a private key, you're going to want to go as generic as possible with the hardware. You're going to want to install well-reviewed open source software on that hardware. You're going to want to flash it. You're, like in, in a perfect world for me, what everybody's Bitcoin self-custody solution looks like is multi-sig running on generic hardware. Like you buy an old laptop, right? Preferably something that isn't you know, but first of all, because it's cheap, but also being older, I think gives it a little bit of an advantage because it's less likely to have some of this more modern um, stuff pushed into it. Could still have vulnerabilities, right? We can't know everything for sure, but the more generic you go, the less likely you are to be the target of this kind of like a specific attack um, that's designed to target people of a particular demographic or of a particular audience. You go as generic as possible, you install the software you, yourself, you either build that software from source or you're verifying at the very least a, a signature on that binary. All of that might sound a little scary, right? But I'm just telling you that any other answer, it's a statin, right? You're, you're not gonna hide from the fact that 
true health requires diet and exercise. Watch the video. It's a good one.